What's up, comic book fans? And welcome to Comics Icons. Now, JJ, what they call me. And today, we got more blood, honey. This time with the first issue of Wolverine Blood Hunt. And if you guys missed any part of this event, then I put a card at the top of the screen for you right now. And I put a link at the end of the video. But right now the vampire apocalypse is in full effect. And even though the mutants have just had to deal with the end of the Krakoan era, they're still not absolved from having to jump right into another war and now deal with vampires. So if you guys are ready to find out how Wolverine deals with this massive blood hunt event, plus you want to catch the Marvel debut of writer Tom Waltz, who previously wrote on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles The Last Ronin, then you guys know what time it is. Let's get it. So the issue kicks off with a bar in California, somewhere west of Barstow. And sun death has already occurred and Logan's got this bar all to himself as reports of the end times show on the TV. And as he enjoys some alone time and free beer, he's met with a military group of vampires and they come in looking for Wolverine. So of course, he reacts instantly on instinct and takes out the first guy that he sees. But then he slows up a bit when he starts to notice how young these dudes are. That these kids never signed up for this. But in that moment, when he hesitates, he's shot in the stomach. And now that pain brings back his rage. And he goes back to work and he cuts through these soldiers. But then one of them manages to spear Wolverine right out of the door. And once he gets outside, he's hit with an electromagnetic beam. A freaking heat ray that burns the metal in his body and scorches him from the inside out. And now Logan is just stuck burning and can't move, can't breathe, can't die. But then out of nowhere, the truck holding the magnetic weapon is destroyed. And we see that Wolverine's got some backup in the form of his old ally, Louise. And she's just in time too, she notes. But he's happy as hell to see her. Louise had been trained from an early age by an ancient holy order called the Night Guard, an elite group of vampire hunters. And she and Logan had first met in France, and she saved his life after a Dracula attempt to exploit the healing factor in his blood. But when they had met again, her entire order had been killed off by the vampires that they had hunted. Either that or turned like Luis. And after they spent a little time catching back up and recapping how Logan helped her when she had turned, he finally gets down to the reason that he had called her for help. It started a few days ago when he was drinking and playing some slot machines just outside of Vegas. But turns out the place had become full of vampires and they started ravaging through the place like a buffet. And the weird thing is one of them even knew Logan's name. But Logan had no idea how he knew him. But he didn't care either. And he fought his way through that casino and then headed outside to see if there were more. And oh yeah. It was a whole lot more and they were tearing through the parking lot. And that's when it hit Logan. And it was only about noon and it was pitch black outside. So he figured it was time to get the hell out of there. Ain't no way he was gonna be stupid enough to stick around when they got that type of an advantage. So he got on his bike and he took off. Then he called a buddy of his, Jeff Bannister, the CIA agent. And he filled Logan in about all of the Dark Force users being taken to black out the entire planet. And then the next call he made was to Louise to try and tap into her expertise about vampires. He figured it'd be best to fight fire with fire. And he thought that this bar would be a safe place for them to meet up, but he didn't expect it to be totally empty, nor did he expect those MPs showing up with a custom weapon made just for him. So she asks him if he knows why it seems that they're targeting him, but he's got no clue. Although his CIA guy Jeff is helping out with that one. And then Jeff calls with an update for Logan that those soldiers that attacked him were from a National Guard MP unit that was activated when all hell broke loose. But the whole platoon went missing. They do have a GPS reading on their vehicles though and they're part of a convoy that's moving west real fast. So Logan decides that he and Luis are gonna go and hunt. And when they cross through California, just northeast of Long Beach, 
they're met by some soldiers standing in the middle of the road waiting for him. And then these soldiers fire a rocket, hitting both Logan and Luis's bikes, sending them flying into the air. They're not here for Luis though, so they just decide to waste her. They came for Wolverine. But Wolverine is ready for him and he lunges out and takes out a couple soldiers. And then he realizes that he recognizes these soldiers. These are mercenaries. And then Louise gets back up and scares the absolute hell out of one of the mercenaries. Because <laughs> they didn't know that she was a vampire and she survived. And then her and Wolverine continue to take down these mercs. First the casino rent-a-cops. Then the National Guard vamps. And now human mercs. What the hell is going on, Logan thinks. And then he gets a call. And it's from an old frenemy, Maverick. And Logan's like, what the hell, Mav? Why did a bunch of your men just ambush me? Then yeah, Maverick reveals that he was the one that had been sending them after Logan all along. He's got some new partners and they want to bring Wolverine into the team. Seems he sided with the vampires because he sees the winds of change and now it's the vamp's time. But Wolverine tells him that sending goons after me ain't a way to recruit me. That don't make sense. But Maverick tells him that it will soon as he's built an alliance and an army. And there's only one thing that's missing. The one thing that'll turn the odds all the way in their favor. Their very own weapon of mass destruction. Logan. So Logan can choose to play for the winning team for once. Or he can keep fighting. These are his options. But it's only going to get harder from here. As we see that Maverick has been turned now. And he tells Logan that if you can't beat him. Join him. And that, my friends, is the end of the issue. So how did y'all like the tie-in? I thought it was pretty cool, and I love the artwork. This Tom Waltz might be a rising star with Marvel, so we might have to keep an eye out for his work. But I wasn't expecting to see Maverick as a vampire, so that was kind of cool. But how you guys seeing this playing out? And do you think that this is a tie-in that you can rock with, with this event? Plus, how you guys feeling about the whole event so far with all of the tie-ins? And it sure is a lot of tie-ins. <laughs> but hit me with all of you guys' thoughts and theories. You know I want to hear them. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this video and this channel, and you'd like to support the channel, then you could do so by stopping by the Comics Icon store and picking you up some of this merchandise, including the background music heard right here in this video available for download or by joining the Iconic Fan Club channel membership. And there'll be a link in the description to join. But with your membership, your voice will be heard during our interactive live streams with yours truly, where we can talk about everything that's been going down on these issues, as well as ones that you'd like for me to go over in the future and other comic book news. Plus, you'll get loyalty badges, member shout outs, and up to 20% off of Comics Icons merchandise from the Comics Icons store. And we've got tiers to the memberships as well, starting at just 99 cents. Or you guys can donate to the channel with a super thanks. And if you're not able to do any of those, then you can still be a tremendous help to the future of this channel. By dropping a like. Share. And subscribe in the comics icons. For more icons. In the comic book world but ladies and gentlemen it's about that time i'm out